518 area code. Who's this? Where are you calling from? Hello, Sam. Can you hear me? Yes. Who's this? Um, this is a man who's so conservative that my intellectual thought leader is a whiny Canadian in a fedora. Vote well, for me. There, there you go. <laughs> Actually, this is Dave from Jamaica. I'm a regular on Michael's show. Um, this is the first time I'm speaking with you, Sam. Well, congratulations um, on the upgrade, Dave. Yeah, it's going to be a <laughs> tough one, Dave. Uh, I've actually been a long-time listener of your show, but uh, I guess I just recently started uh, my patronage. So oh, well, I'm thank a patron you. of Appreciate all three me, shows. Let me give you so one of I these. Bought, uh, TMBS, uh, and your show as well. Oh, hell yeah. Did you hear what he said? Yes, patron of all three. All three. Triple threat. Just gave him a big thank shofar. <laughs> so um, I guess I want to jump in right to the question. I think... This is, I wouldn't say it's more of a Jamie question, but all of you guys can answer on it. Um, I was thinking that the, I know capitalism kind of fuels a lot of our problems, and then this is kind of an evolution of feudalism and so on and so forth. I'm just trying to figure out, though. We've been in this way for like thousands of years. I mean, how do we get the good aspects of what it was like when we're kind of hunter-gatherers or more egalitarian and keep the modern stuff together at the same time? And is this a project that will probably take thousands of years to achieve again? That's a really good question. I mean, capitalism itself is only about 500 years old, but um, mm-hmm. there were there was feudalism before that. I don't know exactly how long that lasted. But, um, yeah, I mean, there are definitely people... Mm-hmm. Hmm? To qualify, uh, not to interrupt, I mean, to qualify, I know things started heading downhill when property and, and agricultural revolution took place. So I, I wouldn't say downhill because being a hunter-gatherer, we, we, might, we might have been nicer to each other, um, but we still had issues, you know, with the lack of technology and dying to wild animals and stuff. But, yeah, sorry, yeah. go ahead. Well... I think a lot of people look back to this uh, hunter-gatherer past in sort of a, like an idealist, anarcho-primitivist way. Um, and pe- those are usually people who've never spent all day washing their clothes in the river or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But I think really the key here is to use the good things that capitalism has produced, like all of this abundance, this overproduction of everything this technology in service of human needs and instead Mm. of profits and to uh to set up society in such a way that cooperation is incentivized instead of um competition and our more base qualities because that's why i mean as i understand it uh that's why according to christopher ryan and people who study this stuff uh that's why people lived in a more communalist way back in the day it's not because they were better people necessarily but because that's what they needed to do in order to survive and i think Mm -hmm. going forward more and more people are going to realize that that's what we need to do now in order to survive and proceed from there break up jewish control of the banks also technology (laughs) can do a lot of the work for us like the amount of time that each human needs to work or would need to work at the current moment in time to produce like a base level of subsistence, decent life for everyone in the world is so much lower than it used to be. Well, certainly that's how it was sold to us too in the, you know, as, as, as late as like the, the forties and fifties that the, you know, that once technology got to this point, the real problem would be how are we going to organize our leisure time? Uh, and, uh, you know, we need to, uh, I mean, I, but things I, aren't produced for their use value right now. They're produced for their exchange value. Yes. So you have a situation where, you know, big giant buildings sit empty while people are homeless outside. Uh, I'm, I'm frankly, uh, you know, um, in my most pessimistic, maybe not even in my most pessimistic um, uh, uh, moments, I think that the chances of a, of a new economic uh, system coming about 
are uh, most likely tied to um, uh, climate change and uh, mm. the implications of climate change. And, and frankly, I think that economic system and slash uh, political system, it can go any number of directions. It's just as easy for me to imagine a, uh, a more authoritarian response to a mm -hmm. some type of climate crisis. I would recommend. Frankly, uh, sadly, I would recommend uh, again. I always Four recommend futures. this book. Yeah, Four Futures, because that inversion, though, that it touches on what both what you're talking about. That environment is treated as an infinite resource when obviously it's finite, and then we create a uh, scarcity in the technology economy, which is completely constructed and does not need to be uh, scarce in any way, shape, or form, at least on a symbolic level. Obviously, the materials that make computers and so on are part of the same ecosystem. And he, I would say those scenarios, I won't re-repeat them, but those four scenarios he, he, tr he basically lays out there are not only like the options we have, you actually see all of them operating right now. So the question is, is just like what gets scaled up? Well, that's always the way I think that history works. Too, right. Is that, it, is absolutely. That you know, everything is happening simultaneously. Everything's yes. existing. And yes. it's just one sort of, uh, for whatever reason, has more durability as, as time goes on. It, yeah, it accelerates. And so even like the idea, like it wasn't just like a strict, like the transition of feudalism to capitalism, as I read it was, yes, there was this way in which capitalism just reconstituted feudalism, then it also became a new thing. And then at the same time, also what happened was there was actually some, like the initial enclosure of the commons was a creation of, you know, a primitive accumulation that created a, fa a fake market where a communal situation actually existed very well in a certain feudal context. So yeah, it's always simultaneous. It's what gets scaled and, what's win and what wins. And you could look and find examples across the globe today of all of these different scenarios. Unfortunately, the worst ones are predominant. Dave, appreciate the call. Gonna jump. Yes. Thanks. Okay. Always a pleasure. Later. Please Bye. call back. Talk with you on Tuesday.